I, I got to attend the opening of a brand new Italian restaurant in New York City, and um, I got to eat a whole bunch of their stuff, like fantastic, wonderful dishes on the menu, and then like take pictures, then like did a write up on uh, did a write up on it and everything, and like, whoo! Oh my God, it was incredible. It was incredible. Y'all want to see pictures? Like, legitimately, do you want to see pictures from it? Hold on. Hang on, let me, let me readjust a couple of things here. A few moments later. Um, this was one of the... Believe it or not, believe it or not, this was, thank you for that hydrate, by the way, Yashi. Uh, hydrate on that, I wish I could, because this was their take on, like, um, what they called, like, a frozen margarita. Because that little scoop in the center, that little scoop in the center was, um, I want to say pineapple sorbet. It was pineapple sorbet, and they poured, like, rum and tequila on top of it. So as the sorbet melted, it acted as the, it acted as the, um, the ice to cool the drink down. Oh my god. It was so good. <laughs> It was so good, and that was literally the first thing I was handed. Literally the first thing that was handed to me. As soon as I walked into into the restaurant. Oh my god. I have tried to recreate this drink so many times. Uh, picture's a little fuzzy because my hands, I think somebody, I think somebody bumped my hand when I was taking this picture. But, it's fresh burrata with extra virgin olive oil, salt, pepper on top of a, um, like a, like a greens salad. Like, I, I think there's some, I honestly forget what was in this salad, but it was, this was really good. Why? Because they actually make, because they actually make the burrata on site. They like make it in the restaurant. It was, just, oh my God, it blew my mind. Because they gave me a quick tour. Well, it wasn't just me, because it was it was a brand it was a brand new opening. It was a, it was a grand opening rather of a brand new restaurant in Manhattan. So I wasn't the only press person invited that night. I was one of many, but like just the fact that they a were generous enough to give us all of these portions and then b. You know, just like sit down and talk with like each person just blew my goddamn mind. I'm like, oh my god, the food is so good. Probably one of my favorite dishes of the night. This is arancini. If you don't know what arancini is, it is essentially, essentially, um, it, are, if you're familiar with the rice dish. Risotto. They make really, really good risotto. They let it chill in the walk-in fridge for a little bit. They portion them out. They form them into balls. Little balls like these. Um, flour. Uh, coating of egg. Breadcrumbs. Deep fry the whole thing. Oh until it's nice and golden brown and crispy. Little salt, little Parmesan on top, once it comes out. So like the outside is, the outside, and the result is the outside is nice and crispy and crunchy. And then you bite into it and then the risotto just starts oozing out. It's so, so good. Arancini, I swear to God, Italian cuisine has to be one of my favorites ever. Oh my God, it's so good. Oh, they top this thing with some extra parm, a little bit of fresh herb, some sauteed mushrooms. Man, I was, I was in heaven. I was in heaven. It was delicious. Reported to Twitch for showing balls on stream. Yashi, no. <laughs> Don't call me out like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! 
<laughs> it was good though. It was really, really good. This, oh man. Um, this this pasta dish actually blew my fucking mind. This pasta dish legitimately blew my mind. Um, tagliatelle with a very simple sauce, just like Parmesan cheese, a little bit of uh, wine reduction. Uh, some of the pasta water to emulsify it, bring it together. Super, super simple. And then they have... And then they have the audacity to combine it with braised oxtail. Oh my god. Oh my fucking god. Oh. I, I didn't even need- I barely needed the spoon, like, the, the- the- the braised oxtail, it fell apart. It fell apart by itself. You know, you know the phrase, you know the phrase, it's so- it's so tender, it's gonna fall apart if you look at it funny. That was the oxtail in this dish. 100%, that was the oxtail in this dish. It was amazing. It was fantastic. I need to go back to this restaurant at some point. Oh my god, it was so good. Well worth the trip. Well worth the trip. Oh. Okay. This one, this one was a twist. This one was a bit of a twist on an, Ital on an Italian classic. So in Italy, they have, um, they have a, a fennel, a fennel and like orange salad that they dress up with like salt, pepper, extra virgin olive oil. And it's really, really fucking good. So they took this a step further, obviously, as you can tell already. They took this a step further. It is, um, it's their fennel and like mandarin. They use mandarin oranges, a uh, little bit of a watercress salad on top, and probably the best seared scallops I've ever had in my entire life. <laughs> Just so tender, complemented perfectly by the citrus and the oil and the crunch, the crunch of the fennel. That fennel was so fresh. Oh my god. <laughs> It was so good, so tasty, so delicious. I'm saying that about everything on this, on, in, in this, in this, uh, in this series of pictures, but it's true. Um, this, oh, was this seafood carbonara? Yeah, it was like, it was kind of like a carbonara. It was kind of like a carbonara, but they had, they had like clams in here as well, which I really dug. Um, like little little shaved shaved garlic, like that's garlic, like superly super thinly shaved garlic. Um, you can see the pancetta in there, the uh, the clams, the clams are I think I think were a fantastic touch, because they got all of that liquid that was in the clam shells to mix with the sauce that brought all the pasta together. Oh my god, it was so good, it was incredible. Like oh my lord. Chefs are magicians. How do they do it? Well, <laughs> Yashi, let me tell you, it takes a lot of training and a lot of learning. I spent four years in culinary school, and then I spent another four out in the food industry in general. Um, I've worked everywhere. Restaurants, food magazines, hospital kitchens, you name it, I probably worked there. I've seen both sides of the food industry, and it was a harrowing journey to say the least. It was a harrowing journey to say the least. Ooh, 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 Okay, okay. This dessert was really fun. This dessert was really fun. Um, I forget, I entirely forget, and I curse my memory for this, I entirely forget what the one on the left was. But the one on the right, the one on the right was their take, kind of like on a flan slash custard, but the orange stuff on top that's actually like peach gelatin, like peach gelatin, and then like the the twill is like a, like a vanilla twill on top. It's like oh oh my god, <laughs> that oh that was a really solid dessert. Honestly, that was a really really solid dessert. I uh, perfect nightcap. Honestly, for perfect perfect end cap to the whole whole thing. Uh, let me make sure. What else do I have in this folder? There's not anything that's gonna break NDA, is there? I mean, it's been years at this point. It's been years. I don't think there is anything under NDA. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. I forgot something. I forgot. 
Hang on, give me two seconds, fam. I got you. Okay. Their signature dessert. Did it jiggle? Absolutely it did. Absolutely it did. So this place, their signature dessert was an Italian classic. This is panna cotta. And it was amazing. Like, I've been to Italy. I spent a month in Italy. This tasted like the same panna cotta I had in Italy. Although dialed up a little bit, you know, di dialed up a little bit, jazzed up a little bit for the, uh, for the, for the New York City crowd, you know? It was so good. Holy shit. It was, whew, fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Oops, sorry, I just got a quick message. Tiramisu? No, it was, uh, um, it was panna cotta, actually. It was panna- they did have- they did have tiramisu on the menu, but their- the chef, the head chef- Do I still have his picture? Actually, no, legitimately, because he sent me a bunch of stock photos for the article. No, I do not, unfortunately. I have a picture of the inside of the restaurant, though. This was awesome. Hold on. Give me a second. Yeah! Oh, man. Like, this was only one side of the restaurant, but, like, this was the side that was next to their wine rack. Which, by the way, that wine rack was literally from the back of the restaurant all the way towards the front. They had such a huge selection of wine. Oh, my God. And let me tell you, the, some of the wine I tasted that night was really fucking good. Holy shit. Real happy I didn't have to drive home that night. <laughs> Real happy I didn't have to drive home that night. My god. <laughs> uh, let's see. Let's see. Do I have any other photos? Eventually. Because there was an entire course I took at culinary school. Just dealing with working with chocolate and making chocolate-based candies and desserts. If you have a sweet tooth, hold on to your butts. <laughs> so we're starting off strong. <laughs> I... I abused them. First of all, I abused the macro lens setting on my digital camera back in the day. Second of all, <laughs> second of all, um, oh, I entirely forget what the name of these these particular candies were, but that's like really that it's it's finished off with some large crystals of sugar and some preserved lemon zest. These were really really good. They were dipped in chocolate at the very end, let that chocolate set until it's nice and crunchy. It's really good. The inside is really soft, too. It's good. I just forget what's in them. These... <laughs> I... <laughs> I really don't know how to describe these truffles, but Chef put it the... The chef who was teaching the class probably put it the best way possible. They kind of look like little poodles. <laughs> Because they legitimately do look like little poodles, because of the chocolate curls. They're like your traditional sort of truffle, like the, it's like chocolate ganache on the inside, a chocolate shell on the outside. And as the chocolate shell on the outside is setting, you just roll them in chocolate shavings to, to, to make them look like this. <laughs> These were really, really good. Like a little, uh, they, they had a little bit of a crunch because of the chocolate shavings on the outside, and then everything just sort of, bleh, like, melted in your mouth because of the chocolate grenache. Oh, it was really good. It was really good. There was more of those. Ah, <laughs> all right. I love these. I love these. Um, These ones we called beehives just because of the, the way they were shaped, and also because the, this was basically... Um, a, uh, oh, what's the term for it? Oh, this has been, it has been forever. Nougat. 
it was a it was like a honey sort of nougat that we had um, piped out, let it set, and then dipped that into chocolate to give it these like honey or beehive looking or like honeycomb looking shape. This one, um, the powder actually we, oh we I, this was the coolest thing I think I've ever seen. Chef took freeze dried raspberries and then just put them in a food processor, pulsed them until they were powder, and then dusted these truffles with them. It's like raspberry ganache in the center, but with a white chocolate shell, and as that chocolate shell is setting before it's like fully, fully set, he just dusted the top of all of them with the pulverized, freeze-dried raspberry powder. And it just, oh, it was just the coolest thing I have ever seen. It was just the coolest fucking thing. It was so good. There's more of those. These, um, oh, okay. All right. All right. Chat, you want a treat? You want a fucking treat? I need to know. I need to, I need to look at my notes because I literally served, saved every notebook I ever used every recipe I ever wrote down in culinary school is here with me in the layer. I just need to I need to go through all of them. But but these are espresso truffles. Like espresso powder was mixed in with a chocolate ganache that forms the center of these. We would then dip them and then just drizzle on top with some extra chocolate for that design. It was so good. It was really, really good. It was really, really tasty. I know, I know I have that somewhere. I know I have that somewhere. These are really good. Yeah, 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 yeah. Here we go. These are the, like, these are dusted with like cocoa powder as well. Some more truffles here. These, okay. If these look familiar to you in any way, it's because, yes, <laughs> we tried to do our own version of like the Snickers bar. We tried to do our own version of this. There's, there's, liter there's literally no other way. There's literally no other way for, for me to explain this. We wanted to do our own take on like a bite size, like one bite Snickers bar. And this is what we came up with, like same exact filling and everything. Same, same, same exact filling and everything. <laughs> we got the little, we got, and we got clever, actually. We got clever with a little wave on top. Because it was just like, just before the chocolate was fully set, we would take, we would take the tines of a fork and then just like wave it. Just like dip it onto the top and just do a little bit of a wave. And let it set the rest of the way that way. And it was really, really good. So we started... We started um, displaying these because once every couple of months we would have something at culinary school called the Grand Buffet where all the different classes, both savory and pastry, would display all of their food out in the main dining hall at culinary school and everybody would come in and take what they wanted. It was really, really good. And we got super creative. Yes, here's, here's, here's a clearer picture. Here's a clearer picture. We got super, super creative. Um, with wanting to display our chocolates. So what we did is we, we, we took all of the scrap chocolate that we had in the, the test kitchen and we tempered it and we formed it into a display platter that we displayed all of our chocolates on. <laughs> all the little truffles, all the little snacks, all the little chocolates, we displayed them on planks of tempered chocolate. And that was, oh man, legit, legit. We turned heads at that Grand Buffet that time. Cause this was the, that was the coolest display idea I think we've ever come up with. It's really, really good. 